Ra is often depicted with the head of a falcon and a solar disk above his head, symbolizing his role as the god of the sun. He represents the life-giving energy of the sun and its power over creation and renewal. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Ra travels across the sky during the day in his solar bark, providing light and warmth to the world. At night, he journeys through the underworld, battling the forces of chaos to ensure the sun's rebirth each morning. Ra is often shown with symbols such as the solar disk, scarab beetle, and solar bark, representing his connection to the sun and its cycles. His presence signifies the principles of light, order, and renewal. Osiris is often depicted as a green-skinned man with a pharaoh's beard, wrapped in mummy bandages. He symbolizes the cycles of life, death, and rebirth, and represents the hope of eternal life. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Osiris was the first king of Egypt, murdered by his jealous brother Set. His wife Isis, with the help of her sister Nephthys, reassembled his body and resurrected him using her magic. Osiris then became the god of the afterlife. Osiris judges the souls of the deceased in the Hall of Ma'at, where their hearts are weighed against the feather of Ma'at. Those who pass this judgment are granted eternal life in the Field of Reeds, a paradise in the afterlife. Osiris is often shown with symbols such as the crook and flail, representing kingship and power, and the Atef crown, adorned with ostrich feathers. His green skin symbolizes rebirth and vegetation. Isis is often depicted as a woman with a throne-shaped crown or a solar disk between cow horns, symbolizing her role as the goddess of magic and healing. She embodies the qualities of compassion, wisdom, and magical prowess. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Isis used her magical abilities to resurrect her husband, Osiris, after he was murdered by his brother Set. By reassembling his body and bringing him back to life, she allowed him to become the ruler of the afterlife. As the mother of Horus, Isis played a crucial role in his upbringing and protection. She ensured his eventual victory over Set, safeguarding the legacy of Osiris and maintaining balance in the cosmos. Isis is associated with symbols such as the throne-shaped crown, solar disk, and the Tyet, or knot of Isis, which represents life and immortality. Her influence extended to all aspects of protection, healing, and magical practices. Horus is often depicted as a falcon, or as a man with a falcon's head, symbolizing his role as the god of the sky. He represents kingship, power, and the vast expanse of the sky. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Horus was raised by his mother, Isis, to avenge his father Osiris's death and reclaim the throne of Egypt from his uncle Set. His epic battles with Set symbolize the struggle between order and chaos, ultimately leading to Horus's victory and the restoration of order. Horus is often shown with symbols such as the Eye of Horus, representing protection and restoration, and the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt, symbolizing his kingship and divine authority. Set is often depicted with the head of a mysterious and unidentified animal, symbolizing his role as the god of chaos and storms. He embodies the destructive and unpredictable forces of nature. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Set is best known for murdering his brother Osiris in a fit of jealousy and ambition. This led to a series of epic battles with Osiris's son, Horus, symbolizing the eternal struggle between order and chaos. Set is often shown with symbols such as the desert, storms, and the unique set animal, representing his connection to chaos and destruction. Despite his fearsome nature, Set was also revered for his strength and was invoked for protection against chaotic forces. Anubis is often depicted as a man with a jackal's head, symbolizing his role as the god of mummification and death. He embodies the principles of preservation and protection. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Anubis presided over the embalming process and the rituals associated with preparing the dead for the afterlife. His presence ensured that the deceased's body was properly preserved for their journey. Anubis is also known for guiding souls through the underworld. He is often depicted weighing the heart of the deceased against the feather of Ma'at to determine their fate in the afterlife. 
Anubis is associated with symbols such as the flail, mummy, and scales used for weighing the heart. These symbols represent his connection to mummification and the judgment of souls. Thoth is often depicted as a man with the head of an ibis, symbolizing his role as the god of wisdom and writing. He embodies intellect, learning, and communication. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Thoth is credited with inventing hieroglyphics, allowing Egyptians to record their history, laws, and religious texts. He presided over scribes, ensuring the accuracy and preservation of important documents. Thoth is associated with symbols such as the ibis, the baboon, and the moon, representing his connection to wisdom and learning. Temples dedicated to Thoth served as centers of knowledge and housed extensive libraries. Thoth is often depicted in scenes of the judgment of the dead, where he records the outcomes of the weighing of the heart against the feather of Maat. This process ensured that truth was upheld and justice was served in the afterlife. Nut is often depicted as a woman arching over the earth, her body adorned with stars, symbolizing her role as the goddess of the sky. She plays a crucial part in the cycles of life and death. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Nut swallows the sun each evening and gives birth to it each morning, representing the cyclical nature of time and the renewal of life. This daily cycle is essential to the Egyptian understanding of the cosmos. Nut is associated with symbols such as the sky, stars, and the ladder used by Osiris to climb to the heavens. These symbols highlight her connection to the night sky and the afterlife. Geb is often depicted as a man lying beneath the sky goddess Nut, symbolizing his role as the god of the earth. His body represents the fertile land and the foundation of life. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Geb is the father of several important deities, including Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephthys. His body is the earth itself, providing a stable foundation for all living things. Geb is associated with symbols such as green skin, representing vegetation and fertility, and the goose often depicted on his head. These symbols highlight his connection to the earth and its prosperity. Bastet is often depicted as a woman with the head of a lioness or a domestic cat symbolizing her role as the goddess of home and cats. She embodies protection, health, and the nurturing aspects of the home. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Bastet is the daughter of Ra and is closely associated with the protective and nurturing aspects of motherhood. She was believed to protect homes from evil spirits and diseases, ensuring the well-being of the household. Bastet is associated with symbols such as the lioness, cat, Sistrum and Ankh, representing her connection to protection, music, and life. Her worship was centered in the city of Bubastis, where grand festivals celebrated her influence. Nun is one of the most ancient and significant gods in the Egyptian pantheon. He represents the primordial waters of chaos, the state of existence before creation. Nun is often depicted as a vast, watery expanse or a bearded man carrying a palm frond a symbol of eternal life. According to Egyptian creation myths, before anything else existed, there was Nun. The chaotic waters of Nun were the source from which the first mound of land emerged. This event marked the beginning of creation and is often associated with the god Adam. Adam, who rose from the waters of Nun, initiated the creation of the world and the other gods. The concept of Nun reflects the ancient Egyptians' understanding of the world's origins. It symbolizes the limitless, formless potential that existed before the structured cosmos. This primordial chaos was not just a physical place, but also a state of existence that was essential to the creation process. Sekhmet is often depicted as a lioness, or as a woman with the head of a lioness, symbolizing her role as the goddess of war and healing. She embodies the fierce power of the sun and the dual nature of destruction and renewal. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Sekhmet is the daughter of Ra, created to punish humanity for their disobedience. As the goddess of war, she leads armies into battle, bringing victory and strength to the warriors. Sekhmet is associated with symbols such as the lioness, the solar disk, and the cobra, representing her connection to the sun and her protective nature. Temples dedicated to her served as centers for military and medical practices. 
Despite her fearsome nature, Sekhmet also has a healing aspect. She was invoked to cure diseases and protect against epidemics, reflecting the ancient Egyptians' understanding of the close relationship between destruction and healing. Mott is depicted as a woman wearing a feathered crown. She is the daughter of the sun god Ra and plays a crucial role in maintaining the cosmic order and moral balance. As the goddess of truth and justice, Mott's feather is used in the weighing of the heart ceremony. This process determines whether a soul is worthy of eternal life. If the heart is lighter than her feather, the soul is granted access to the afterlife. Mott symbolizes order and balance in the universe. Her principles were essential in Egyptian politics, society, and religion. Pharaohs ruled according to Mott's principles, ensuring justice and truth in their governance. Mott is often shown with symbols like the feather, scales, and the sun. These symbols were prevalent in temples and courts, representing truth and justice. Mott's influence extended across all aspects of Egyptian life. Nephthys is depicted as a woman with wings, symbolizing her role as a protector and her connection to the afterlife. She embodies the duality of death and rebirth, and her magical powers were revered by both gods and humans. As the goddess of protection, Nephthys used her wings to shield the souls of the deceased. The ancient Egyptians believed she guarded the spirits from evil and guided them safely to the afterlife. She played a crucial role in funerary rituals, ensuring the deceased reached the afterlife securely. Nephthys was also a powerful goddess of magic. She used her spells to heal the sick, ward off evil spirits, and provide strength and protection to those in need. Nephthys was especially revered as a guardian of women in childbirth and young children. Nephthys is often shown with symbols like wings, the Ankh, and various magical tools. Her primary temple was located in Abu Sir, where many came to seek her protection and magical blessings. Nephthys represents the duality of death and rebirth. While she protected and guided the deceased to the afterlife, she also used her sacred magic to aid in resurrection and renewal. This dual role highlights her complex and multifaceted nature. Amun is depicted as a man wearing a crown with two tall feathers. Initially a local god of Thebes, Amun rose to prominence and became a nationally revered deity. He is known as the Hidden One, present everywhere yet invisible. Amun combined with the sun god Ra to become Amun-Ra, a powerful deity representing both the sun's might and the creative force. Amun-Ra was considered one of the most important gods in Egyptian mythology, symbolizing the power and prosperity of the pharaoh and the nation. As the god of the sun and creation, Amun was believed to bring the sun up each morning, filling the world with light and life. His creative power was seen as the source of all life. Amun is often shown with the sun disk and ram's horns, symbolizing his connection to the sun and his creative power. His primary temple was located in Karnak, where grand festivals were held annually to honor him. These festivals included music, dance, and theatrical performances. Amun played a crucial role in maintaining cosmic order. He provided life and order to both gods and humans, ensuring the prosperity and stability of Egypt. Amun's principles guided the pharaohs and the people, promoting moral standards in the practice of truth and justice. Adam is depicted as a man wearing a crown, symbolizing his role as the first god and the creator of everything. He is believed to have created himself from the primordial waters of Nun and then went on to create the other gods and the world. According to Egyptian mythology, Adam emerged from the chaotic waters of Nun and brought himself into existence. From himself, he created the gods, including Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the goddess of moisture, who in turn gave birth to Geb, the earth god, and Nut, the sky goddess. Atum is also associated with the sun and is sometimes considered an aspect of the sun god Ra. He represents the setting sun and the process of creation and renewal. Atum's daily journey across the sky symbolizes the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Atum is often shown with symbols such as the sun disk and the serpent, representing his creative power and his connection to the sun. His primary temple was located in Heliopolis, where rituals and ceremonies were conducted to honor his creative force. Atum played a crucial role in maintaining cosmic order. 
His act of creation from chaos symbolized the establishment of order from disorder, emphasizing the importance of balance and harmony in the universe. Sobek is depicted as a man with the head of a crocodile, symbolizing his connection to the Nile River and its life-giving waters. He is revered as a powerful and protective deity. Sobek is closely linked to the Nile River, which was the lifeblood of ancient Egypt. The Nile's waters brought fertility and abundance to the land, and Sobek was believed to control these waters, ensuring the prosperity of crops and the well-being of the people. Sobek was also regarded as a formidable protector. With the strength and courage of a crocodile, he was believed to guard the people against evil and disaster. His divine power was especially invoked to protect soldiers in battle and bring them victory. Sobek is often shown with symbols such as the crocodile and water, representing his dual role as a god of the river and a protector. His primary temple was located in the Fayum Oasis, where many worshipped him and prayed for his blessings of protection and prosperity. Sobek embodies the duality of water and protection, overseeing the fertility brought by the Nile while also serving as a powerful guardian. His complex nature reflects his divine strength and multifaceted role in Egyptian mythology. Shu is a pivotal figure in the Egyptian pantheon, revered as the god of air and atmosphere. He is often depicted wearing a feather on his head, a symbol of air. Shu's most significant role in mythology is separating Nut, the sky goddess, from Geb, the earth god, creating the essential space for life to thrive. According to the creation myth, Shu was born from the primordial waters of Nun, along with his twin sister Tefnut, the goddess of moisture. Together, they represent two vital elements, air and water. Shu's act of holding the sky apart from the earth symbolizes the establishment of order from chaos, a fundamental theme in Egyptian mythology. Shu is also associated with light and dryness, contrasting with Tefnut's association with moisture. This balance between Shu and Tefnut is essential for maintaining harmony in the world. Shu's influence ensures that the earth remains dry and habitable, while Tefnut's moisture nourishes life. In ancient Egyptian culture, the air was considered a divine force essential for life. Shu's presence was invoked in rituals and prayers to maintain balance and order in the world ensuring the prosperity and well-being of the people. Tefnut is a vital deity in the Egyptian pantheon, revered as the goddess of moisture and rain. She is often depicted as a lioness or a woman with the head of a lioness, symbolizing her fierce and nurturing nature. Tefnut plays a critical role in sustaining life, providing the essential moisture needed for crops and agriculture. According to the creation myth, Tefnut and her twin brother Shu, the god of air, were born from the sun, god Ra. Together, they represent the complementary forces of air and moisture. Tefnut's role in this duo is crucial, as she brings the rain and dew that fertilize the land, ensuring the prosperity and well-being of the people. In ancient Egypt, moisture was considered a divine blessing. Tefnut's influence was invoked in rituals and prayers to bring rain and ensure bountiful harvests. Her presence was seen as essential for maintaining the delicate balance of nature. Tefnut's symbolism extends beyond just moisture and rain. As a lioness, she embodies both protection and ferocity, safeguarding the natural order and the fertility of the land. Her role underscores the interconnectedness of life and the elements in ancient Egyptian belief. Anith is depicted as a woman holding a bow and arrows, symbolizing her role as a warrior and hunter. She is one of the oldest goddesses in ancient Egyptian mythology, worshipped for her strength and versatility. As the goddess of war, Nith symbolizes courage and power in battle. Egyptians prayed to Nith for protection and victory in conflicts. She was believed to inspire soldiers and ensure their success on the battlefield. Nith is also the goddess of hunting, bringing luck and success to hunters. She represents the skills and techniques of tracking and capturing prey with her bow and arrows. Hunters prayed to Neith for a successful hunt and guidance. Neith's role extends beyond war and hunting. She is also revered as a protector and creator, believed to have woven the heavens and the earth. She safeguards both gods and humans, ensuring their safety and well-being. 
Nyth is often shown with symbols such as the bow, arrows, and shield, representing her martial prowess and protective nature. Her primary temple was located in Saïs, where people worshipped her and sought her blessings for protection and victory. Neith embodies the duality of war and hunting, overseeing both the battlefield and the hunt. Her complex nature reflects her divine strength and multifaceted role in Egyptian mythology. Hathor, whose name means House of Horus, is one of the most revered goddesses in the Egyptian pantheon. Often depicted as a cow, a woman with cow ears, or a woman adorned with a sun disk and cow horns, Hathor symbolizes the nurturing aspects of motherhood, the joy of music, and the passion of love. In ancient Egypt, Hathor was worshipped in temples that were vibrant centers of music, dance, and healing. Her association with music and dance made her a beloved deity among musicians and dancers. Festivals in her honor were filled with joy, singing, and dancing, reflecting her role as a bringer of happiness. As a goddess of motherhood, Hathor played a crucial role in the daily lives of ancient Egyptians. She was invoked for fertility and women's health, and her protective nature made her a guardian of mothers and children. Hathor's nurturing qualities ensured that she was a central figure in family life and childbirth. Hathor was also associated with healing and was believed to possess great medical knowledge. Her temples often served as centers for healing practices, where people would come to seek her blessings for health and wellness. Khonsu is a deity associated with the moon and the passage of time, often depicted as a young man with a side lock of youth and a lunar disc on his head. Kansu symbolizes the cyclical nature of the moon and the relentless march of time. His name, Kansu, means traveler, reflecting the moon's nightly journey across the sky. This nightly voyage of the moon made him a symbol of time and its passage in ancient Egyptian culture. Kansu was also believed to have the power to heal and protect. His association with healing made him a revered deity in times of illness and trouble. Temples dedicated to Kansu often depicted him in a protective stance, watching over the people. Ta is a revered deity known for his role as a creator god and a patron of craftsmen. He is often depicted as a mummified man holding a scepter that combines the Ankh, Jed, and was symbols representing life, stability, and power. According to mythology, Ta created the world through his thoughts and words. This highlights his immense power and the belief that he brought order and structure to the cosmos, shaping the world through his divine will. Ta was especially venerated in Memphis, where he was considered the patron of craftsmen, builders, and architects. His influence extended to all forms of craftsmanship, making him a central figure in the daily lives of artisans. Mut's name means mother in ancient Egyptian, reflecting her role as a nurturing and protective deity. She is often depicted as a woman wearing a vulture headdress or the double crown of Egypt symbolizing her status as both a mother figure and a queen. As a mother goddess, Mut embodies the caring and protective aspects of motherhood. She is considered a creator goddess, responsible for the birth and nurturing of all living beings. Her connection to motherhood and creation is central to her worship. Mut is the consort of Amun, one of the principal gods in the Egyptian pantheon. Together with their son Khonsu, the moon god, they form the Theban Triad, a powerful group of deities worshipped primarily in Thebes. Kepri is the god of the morning sun and rebirth. He is often depicted as a scarab beetle, a symbol of creation, renewal, and transformation. But why a scarab beetle, you might ask? The scarab beetle's unique behavior of rolling dung into a ball and burying it was seen by the ancient Egyptians as a metaphor for the sun being rolled across the sky. This daily cycle of the sun rising, setting, and rising again was closely linked to Kepri's role in the continuous cycle of life. Kepri is sometimes viewed as an aspect of Ra, the great sun god. While Ra represents the sun at its peak, Kepri represents the rising sun, bringing light and life to the world each morning. His name means to become or to come into being highlighting his connection to creation and rebirth. Amunet, whose name means the Hidden One, is a goddess shrouded in mystery and invisibility. She is often depicted as a woman wearing the red crown of Lower Egypt, symbolizing her connection to the hidden aspects of the world. 
Often shown holding a staff or an ankh, Amenet symbolizes life and protection. She is one of the oldest deities in Egyptian mythology, known for her association with Amun, the god of air and hidden things. Together with Amun, Amunet represents the concealed and mysterious elements of the universe. Their partnership emphasizes the duality of the visible and invisible worlds, highlighting the hidden forces that govern life in the cosmos. Nekbet is the vulture goddess of Upper Egypt, embodying protection, motherhood, and royalty. She is often depicted as a majestic vulture, symbolizing her role as a guardian and a maternal figure. As a protector of the pharaoh and the nation, Nekbet's image was often used to symbolize the divine safeguarding of the king. Her widespread wings represent her protective embrace over Egypt's ruler and people. The vulture was seen as a nurturing mother in ancient Egypt, reinforcing Nekbet's role as a guardian deity. She was revered for her maternal instincts and protective nature, ensuring the well-being of the land and its leaders. Nefertem is the god of beauty and healing, often depicted as a young man with a lotus flower on his head. This lotus flower symbolizes rejuvenation and the rising sun, reflecting his role in bringing renewal and restoration. The lotus flower, which blooms in the morning and closes at night, is a powerful symbol of rebirth and renewal. This aligns perfectly with Nefertim's role as a healer and restorer, both physically and spiritually. Nefertim is often shown holding scepters that symbolize power and authority. He is considered the son of Ptah and Sekhmet, or Bastet, forming a divine triad in Memphis. This connection highlights his importance in the pantheon of gods. Reshep, also known as Reshef or Reshef, is an ancient Near Eastern god originally worshipped in Canaanite and Phoenician mythology. Later, he was adopted into Egyptian religion. Reshep is often depicted as a fierce warrior, armed with weapons like a spear or a bow. Reshep's association with plague and disease is one of his most defining characteristics. As the god of plague, he was believed to bring epidemics and pestilence, striking fear into the hearts of ancient peoples. Despite his fearsome nature, Reshep was also regarded as a protector. He was invoked to ward off the very calamities he could bring, such as diseases and war, highlighting his dual role in ancient belief systems. Min is a deity associated with male fertility, abundance, and sexual potency. He is often depicted as a man with an erect phallus and a headdress adorned with two tall feathers, symbolizing his vital role in procreation and fertility. Min's influence extended beyond human fertility to agriculture, where he was believed to ensure the fertility of the fields and the prosperity of the land. His connection to abundance made him a crucial figure in the lives of ancient Egyptians. Worship of Min dates back to the pre-dynastic period, with major centers of his veneration located in Koptos and Akmim. He was revered as a powerful god whose blessings were essential for the well-being and prosperity of the community. Bes is a unique deity in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a dwarf-like figure with a fierce yet comical appearance. This unusual look was believed to scare away evil spirits and bring good fortune to those who invoked his protection. Bes's primary role was to protect against evil spirits and bad energy. His image was commonly placed in homes, especially in areas related to childbirth and family life, where his presence was thought to safeguard women and children. Bess was not only a guardian against evil, but also a god of music, dance, and joy. His protective powers extended to ensuring happiness and well-being in daily life, making him a beloved figure in ancient Egyptian households. Wadjet is a prominent deity in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a cobra or a woman with a cobra's head. She symbolizes royalty, sovereignty, and divine authority, playing a crucial role as the protector of Egypt. As one of the oldest deities, Wadjet was originally a local goddess of the Nile Delta. Over time, she became a national symbol of protection, closely associated with the pharaoh and the nation's well-being. Wadjet's image, often depicted on the pharaoh's crown, signifies her role in safeguarding the ruler. Her presence was believed to offer protection and divine authority to the pharaoh. Seishad is a prominent deity in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a woman wearing a leopard skin dress and a headdress with a seven-pointed star or a stylized papyrus plant. She is known as the divine scribe and record keeper. 
Seychat's role was crucial in recording the achievements of pharaohs and keeping track of important events. She was believed to assist rulers in documenting their reign and ensuring that their deeds were preserved for posterity. Seychat's influence extended to mathematics, astronomy, and architecture. She was a key figure in the development of these disciplines, making her essential to the cultural and administrative advancements of ancient Egypt. Mehet Weret is a prominent deity in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a celestial cow. Her name means Great Flood or Great One of the Waters, symbolizing her connection to the primeval waters in the sky. Mehet Weret was believed to give birth to the sun every morning, pushing it into the sky from the primordial waters. This act symbolizes her role in creation and the life-giving forces of the universe. Her imagery as a celestial cow also represents the nurturing and sustaining aspects of the waters. Mehet Weret's role was crucial in Egyptian cosmogony, representing the forces that sustain life and the universe. Serapis is a unique deity, created during the Ptolemaic period to unite Greek and Egyptian religious beliefs. He is often depicted as a man with Greek features, wearing a modius on his head, symbolizing abundance and fertility. Serapis incorporates aspects of several gods, blending the Egyptian gods Osiris and Apis with the Greek gods Zeus, Hades, and Dionysus. This fusion made Serapis a versatile and widely revered deity. As a god of healing, fertility, and the afterlife, Serapis was worshipped in both Egypt and Greece. His temples served as centers of cultural and religious exchange, symbolizing the unity between these two great civilizations. Apis is a revered deity in ancient Egyptian religion, symbolizing strength, fertility, and kingship. Often depicted as a bull with a solar disk and Urius between its horns, Apis represents a divine connection to the sun god Ra. Apis bulls were identified by specific markings and were considered intermediaries between humans and the god Ptah. These sacred bulls were housed in the Apis house in Memphis, where they received worship and reverence. The significance of Apis extended to his role in ensuring fertility and prosperity. His presence was believed to bring strength and vitality to the land, supporting the well-being of the people. Happy is a unique deity in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a man with a pot belly and large breasts, carrying offerings. This depiction reflects the abundance and nourishment he brings to the land through the annual flooding of the Nile. The annual inundation of the Nile was crucial for Egyptian agriculture. Happy's role was to ensure the river's floods brought fertile silt to the fields, making the land productive and prosperous. Happy is often shown wearing a belt and a headdress made of aquatic plants, symbolizing his close connection to the Nile and its life-giving waters. His image was a common sight in temples and homes, as he was revered as a provider of all good things. Hemsut are powerful goddesses associated with fate, destiny, and protection. They are often depicted as female figures holding a scepter and the ankh, symbolizing life and power. These goddesses are considered personifications of the creative power and the force of destiny. They influence both the physical and spiritual aspects of life, guiding individuals towards their destined path and protecting them from harm. The Hemsut were often invoked in prayers and rituals to ensure a prosperous and successful life. Their presence was believed to bring balance, harmony, and protection to those who sought their favor. Ayusaset is a powerful goddess in Egyptian mythology often regarded as the grandmother of the gods. She is associated with creation and the primordial forces of the universe. Yusaset is sometimes seen as the female counterpart to Adam, the creator god. She embodies the creative and nurturing aspects of the cosmos, symbolizing the eternal and infinite nature of the universe. Depicted as a woman wearing the solar disk and Uraeus, Yusaset holds a scepter and the ankh, symbols of power and life. Her imagery reflects her vital role in the creation myths and her connection to the divine. Mafdet is a powerful goddess in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a woman with the head of a cheetah or a lynx. This imagery symbolizes swift justice and her role in combating evil. Known for her ability to protect against venomous creatures like snakes and scorpions, Mafdet was revered as a fierce defender of the pharaoh and the sanctity of temples. 
her presence ensured the safety and protection of all who invoked her. Moff Det's influence extended to the afterlife, where she assisted in the judgment of souls. Her role was crucial in maintaining justice and order, both in the mortal realm and the afterlife. Kebahut is a unique deity in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a serpent or a woman pouring cool, purifying water. She is known for her role in purification and refreshment, especially in the context of funerary rituals. As the daughter of Anubis, the god of mummification, Kebahut plays a crucial role in the afterlife. She provides water to the deceased, symbolizing purification and the quenching of their thirst in the afterlife. Kebahut's purifying water is believed to cleanse and revitalize the spirits of the dead, helping them transition smoothly to the afterlife. Her presence in tombs and funerary texts underscores her importance in ensuring a peaceful and purified journey for the departed. Tawaret is a unique and powerful deity in Egyptian mythology, often depicted as a female hippopotamus with the limbs of a lion and the tail of a crocodile. This combination symbolizes her protective and nurturing nature. Tawaret's primary role was to protect women during pregnancy and childbirth. She was believed to ward off evil spirits and ensure the safety of both mother and child, making her a vital guardian in ancient Egyptian households. Her image was commonly used in household items and amulets, reflecting her importance as a guardian of the home and family. Tawaret's presence was thought to bring protection and comfort to all family members.